Right, now the paper is absolutely bone dry. Just to, a little check, use the back of your hand and if it feels, still feels cool, it means that it's not actually dry. So just make sure it is absolutely bone dry before we go on to stage two. Okay, without any more ado, we'll go in and we'll put in this little background bank of hills. Um, we'll take our cobalt blue and we'll take a little bit of alizarin crimson, a little bit of burnt sienna. There's no shortcut to this, we've just got to carefully painting these colours and try and make a, a believable painting out of it all. Keep these colours moving. Just because we're painting wet onto dry doesn't mean that you mix, uh, mix them or over mix them on the palette. Once you start making a, a lovely cake mix on the palette, that is the only, that's the only colour you'll, you'll uh, put on the paper. Dip your brush into the different colours and bring them out and still keep them very wet and mix them on the paper. It help, it'll help with the overall, uh, the overall painting and give it some life and vitality. Right. So the background hill, so we'll leave that to dry now and we'll work our way just gently down the paper now into this sort of middle, middle distance. So we'll put our yellow down, our Aurelian yellow, and uh, we'll just knock it back with a tiny bit of raw sienna. And again, we'll use our cobalt blue because that'll blue it a touch. And we're painting these these middle distance fields. Keep them simple. We don't want these jumping out. The day itself was quite sort of bland, so we haven't got to worry about strong shadows. Now while that's going, I think we'll just set in this, this, this darker band here of, of our olivey green. We've gone back to the good old raw sienna for this one, so we're just slightly making it an olivey green rather than a than a bright green. Let me ask you. Again, I'm using these colours and I'm letting the colours, you can see this, I'm letting the colours actually mingle on the paper and don't overbrush. It's so easy to see the piece and moving in, moving in all the time and letting your brush waggle around in these beautiful wet washes and then you'll end up spoiling this beautiful spontaneity which I'm trying to get here. So we're just bringing those colours in here and keeping it keeping it simple. Now we've got to be careful here because here's our river. So we don't want any of this encroaching into our river. Our eye is going to go up here. So this is a, a main point in the scene. So try and keep that nice and clean and fresh. And also don't paint right up to the edges. Let the paint sort of soften out so the eye is coming into the painting rather than going out here. If you have a whole lot of detail right on this edge here, you're going to end up with an all, you know, the eye is going to move out all over the place. So we want to, we want to zone ourselves into this bit here. So all the time we're bringing these colours down in here. We're going to get a slightly stronger mix. Um, originally I put down ultramarine, a little bit of alizarin and some aurelian yellow. What we're going to do, now we're going to use exactly these same mixtures, but we're going to make them a slightly thicker. So we're, we're up to a sort of a slightly different consistency. We've moved up to a medium thick cream. Okay, so we'll, we'll make a... That's just gone a little bit. Let's say that's better. Now we just bring those down through here. Too many times people want to go in and uh, and build up a succession of washes, and they won't put the strength of colour that you need down. And say, oh, well, you can always come back in and put another colour over that, and then if that's not strong enough, we put another colour over it. And each and every time we lay a load of colour down onto this paper we're actually knocking back the white of the paper, which is the main thing we want to do. We want the white of the paper coming through the transparency of the pigments that we're putting down here. Once we start putting a good old thick blob of paint down there, you, then you lose all the transparency. And once the transparency goes, I'm afraid that's when the old mud starts to appear. Let's get rid of those. Keep it wet, keep it vibrant. So often we forget that it's actually called watercolour and end up with a whole load of thick paint in here. Whoops, just knock that back out, it's fine. As we come further forward, we'll bring it we'll get a little bit more green down through here. Bring that over there. And we're going to let the colour 
going to drop down into here and form this nice sharp edge that will outline the river. Yep. You see the underlying wash will actually come through these subsequent washes as long as you keep them wet and transparent, they'll be fine. The trouble comes when you start going too heavy, so we just keep it nice and wet and flowing, there you go. So we've now brought out that lovely edge of the, uh, of the river just along here now, so we leave that. Then we'll work our way back. Let's try and make a little, get a little bit of form into these uh, riverside trees. Back to our yellow again. And we'll make these slightly brighter. Set that into there. Don't worry too much about getting that exact colour. By the time you've sat down and and pitched that colour absolutely right, you can bet your bottom dollar you've mixed it, you've overmixed it, and it'll be dead and flat and boring. So. This business of trying to mix it on the on the paper hopefully should alleviate that. So just soften little bits here and there. Take little bits out with a you're using a damp brush and just pull little bits out. What we don't want, we don't want harsh lines through the whole lot. So we just there we go. So we've got that lovely little little edge coming round there. We'll take that on down because this is the the actual bank here, so we'll pull that on down through there. Let's take a little bit more, that's better. Stick that down through there. Again, we're using the same old colours, just combin the same combinations of colours. We're only, we're only using the same five colours through this whole painting and hopefully we'll get a little bit of continuity through it all. All right, now we can go back and we probably, I think, make sure that's dry. Yeah, we can go back and we put another Another wash over here. At the moment, we've got this, this area of no man's land, which isn't doing a lot of anything. So we've got to try and bring ourselves from here down into here. So we'll, we'll start off with a slight mixture of cobalt blue, a little bit of iridium in there just to knock it back. And we'll put a nice wash right over that whole lot that's in there. We're going to have a bank of trees up through the top here. So the fact that those, that line might encroach a little bit it won't matter. We'll just leave a little bit of dry brush on there. There we go. Bring that down. Okay, not too strong. Not too strong. Just enough to just lift it a little. Use a little bit of burnt sienna. Drop that in into there. And it just make a slightly different colour. Form that sort of patchwork feel to it. There we go. Drop that in there like that. Okay, we leave that to dry. If we actually start painting any colour onto that, it'll dribble up into there, which we don't want. Let's have a look down here. Let's try and get something working into this um, this area here, this foreground. These are pastures. The Y Valley Walk runs along there. Bring that. Now, it doesn't matter if we get a bit of texture into here because we're actually moving forward. The further forward you get, the more you can actually see what's going on. The further back you go, colour and details tend to recede. When you've got a large area, mix it on the on the on the paper rather than mixing it on the palette. And then we're slightly stronger as we come forward. There might have been a slight um, shadow just looking in here, so we'll just bring that forward. There we go. Don't overbrush. Don't overbrush. Right, we're getting there. Right, well, we've let those washes dry and uh, we're ready to go on now and putting a bit of detail into the over these washes. Uh, before we do this, what I'm going to actually do is just lift off a few bits and pieces here and there, just so you can um, produce some nice effects just by lifting off. And this is just plain water over these edges here. And then we just go in with a clean tissue and just dab it here and there. It just takes the hard edge off these uh, these banks here. There we go. And also we just move gently into this little bit of foliage here, these trees, and we just drop out. So we're just bringing out a little bit of 
highlight. There you go. I brought the brush down a size now. I'm sort of working with a, a slightly smaller brush. Using glasses on for this one. I just drop these in behind. Now this is where the river go, drops in behind the uh, behind the field line there. Again, keep the washes nice and wet and keep the colour moving about. Even though I'm only doing it in this small area, you can still keep the water moving and lively. Once that starts sitting down on the paper flat and dead, that's it, you've, you've lost it. stand of trees so at the top of the stand it'll be a ragged edge but usually it'll follow a, a hedge boundary or a fence boundary or something so you'll find it'll probably uh, follow the contours of the, of the hill or the, the field that it's in so always make the, the bottom of that stand of hills or uh, of that stand of trees make that fairly straight and then it'll say to the viewer this is a, a stand of trees sitting in a, in a field it's very easy once you start getting into doing the the detail it's very very easy to overdo this this stage of the uh, the proceedings you know you you think oh everything starts to come to life and you add a little bit more a little bit more and then at the end of the day you've just added a little too much and uh, you've lost the, the whole the whole plot as it were we just carry on down here in the same way again careful we don't overdo it Right, well we can really zone in now and start putting in some of the details, so I'll put the slightly larger brush away and we'll bring out the rigger. Very quickly dragging the brush so you get this semi-broken line, so it's again we're in focus in places and we're out of focus, it just keeps that sort of tension going in the, in the painting. Again, don't overdo this, it's very very easy to do it, once you get a rigger in your hand you know to go mad, try and keep it down to a minimum if possible. I feel we need to, to just knock that little area in the background there to really push that back and get rid of some of the, uh, the harsher details. And what we're going to do now, we're going to take a deep breath, nice large brush, and we're going to get straight in there and we're going to knock that whole lot back. So there we have it, picture's done. Very quickly, very succinctly, we've actually just taken a few washes, put the washes together and made a, a, a little visual picture of the view in front of us, very simply, with a min minimum amount of washes, and uh, I think there we have it. now available to buy. Try these techniques at home whenever you wish. The extended DVD of today's workshop is now available from the Painting and Drawing channel. For further information and to order your copy, go to www.paintingdrawingchannel.com.